Thank you.
morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> there are two kinds of people in the world. Those who wake up and say, good God, it's morning. And some who get up and say, good God, it's morning. I hope you're in the former group and welcome to worship today. Pastor Doug with you wearing some non-liturgical wear. I decided today to add a little color into your life. And uh, a reminder to be kind will come up in the message. Uh, but I thought I'd just do a little something different to add some color and have a little fun today. So why not, right? We're here today on the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, fourth Sunday. We are moving our way along, are we not? And you're like, Pastor Doug, I always appreciate your giving me information about the church calendar. Thank you. Thank you. No, you don't have to say anything. I'm going to do it anyway. But uh uh, what was I going to say? So, fourth Sunday today, and then we have another week of the fifth Sunday after Epiphany on the seventh, and then Valentine's Day, the transfiguration of our Lord, the transfiguration of the Lord, the second time in recorded scripture we hear God speak, transfiguration of our Lord on February 14th, and then we begin Lent on the 17th, Wednesday, February 17th. Today, we're in the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, the 31st of January, no less. Five Sundays in January. Didn't you love it? In Deuteronomy, God promises to raise up a prophet like Moses, who will speak for God. In Psalm 111, God shows the people the power of God's works. For the church, these are ways to pointing to the unique authority people sensed in Jesus' actions and words. We encounter that authority in God's word around which we gather, the word that prevails over any lesser spirit that would claim power over us, freeing us, freeing us, freeing us to follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. Rise and shine, you people. now enter into our time of confession and forgiveness, friends. We always begin worship that day, and Luther invited us every day to wake up, do the sign of the cross, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and confess our sins, hear God's forgiveness, say the Lord's Prayer, and begin our day. So we always start out with confession and absolution, because before we can really enter into a time of worship, a time of church, a time of getting together like this, virtually or however, we want to confess. And so we do that knowing that blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose God, uh, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all the people, and whose goodness cascades over all creation. And all God's people say, Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and you know us. You are acquainted with all of our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. 
We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for we have done and left undone. For all that we have done and left undone, even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive our words in divine mercy. Amen. And the good news today, friends, and every day, how vast, vast, think vastness, open vastness, how vast is God's grace? Amen. Through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken, and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Deuteronomy 18, beginning at verse 15. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you are requested of the Lord your God to Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear a voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are in right, excuse me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name. I myself will hold accountable by a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak. That prophet shall die. Psalm 111. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning at the first verse. Now, concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, 
even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might not they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing, falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The Holy Gospel today, friends, comes from the Gospel of Mark in the first chapter. Lord, you, yeah, Lord. <laughs> Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and he taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are, and I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed. Commands, he commands even the unclean spirits. What a new authority. They were all amazed. They kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> you may be seated. Oh, look, you already are. Boys and girls, you all look so beautiful and handsome today. So do you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, today, boys and girls, I want us to think about church and what it means to be church. As you can see on my sign, where Carol Merrill is now pointing, Vanna White is now pointing, we are the church, it says. We are the church. So let's do that thing that you love to do so much with me, and let's make our sign of the church. Ready? I'm going to interlock our fingers, right? You want to raise up your pointers. Come on, everybody at home. Raise up your pointers. Make your thumbs the gate. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors, and there's all the people, right? You want to do it again, boys and girls? Wasn't that fun? Yes, it was. You interlock your fingers. Bring up your pointers, make your thumbs the doors. Here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the doors, and here's all the people. Isn't that exciting? The church, friends, is not a building. Boys and girls, it's not a building, it's the people. So all these people make up the church, and that's why we are the church. So go out and be church today. Love someone, invite them to come when we get back together or share these videos and love one another. Amen? Amen. Well, everybody, greetings in the name of the one who was and is and is to come.
Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One Sunday, the pastor noticed and looked out over the congregation. He saw a guy there who he had not seen at church very often. It was a minimal attender, something like that. And the pastor saw him and said, well, I'll talk to him after church. And so church ended. The pastor's in the doorway greeting everyone, as we love to do. And the pastor said to this guy, uh, sir, we need you. We need you in the Lord's army. We need you in the Lord's army. And the guy thought a second. He's kind of a good old boy, you know, friendly guy. And he said, well, sir, I am in the Lord's army. I'm just in the secret service. <laughs> oh, great comeback. I'm in the secret service. <laughs> well, friends, what is it about church attendance? Church attendance. I get it. I love church attendance. I love to see you there. I want you to come because you get to, not because you have to, right? And it's our opportunity to come together as a family of faith and worship. And worship. Have you ever heard the term in the church, it circulates around, creasters? Are you or do you know someone or was your family one time creasters? My family was, as I was growing up in the Presbyterian church of my grandfather and grandmother, we were creasters, my immediate family. We A creaster attends on Christmas and Easter. Christmas and Easter. A creaster. <laughs> uh, it is uh, so interesting to me the pressure that many of you put on yourself about attendance. And again, I get attendance. I want really high attendance. God would like to fill the buildings. God would like to fill them to overflow. But we have our own choice. I get it. Some mornings you don't feel it. You don't feel well. Right now we're, we're you know, in a huge hole with the coronavirus and all that it's meant for us. Right now, all of us long, long to be together. We long to be together. And we're not going to be able to uh, for at least a little bit. We, each council is going to look at that and decide independently, but look for more information to come. The variants are out and about. The, the vaccine has is, is, had some problems getting out. And um, we're still in the orange for the county of Marion County, at least. I think Hendricks County also. So it's, it's, it's difficult. And so we're doing it virtually, which is the next best thing. And I've urged along the way for you to reach out and stay in contact with each other, uh, to send cards or notes or to call each other, um, Zoom gatherings, whatever you can do to reach out, because I think we need that so desperately. And yet we know that God is with us, and it's going to be okay, right? It's going to be okay. We will be back in the buildings having services as soon as we can safely do that. And I want you to know that from my heart. And you're speaking on behalf of the councils, right? So when I was a chaplain at St. Vincent Hospital, uh, I, I would guess probably 70 to 80% of the patients that I met, and I served in four different building locations in three different cities over my career as a chaplain. And for the large majority of the people, they did not have a current church home. I call it a church home, a family of faith, right? A family of faith. We have, your family may be full of faith, that's beautiful, but I'm talking about the family of faith that gathers on Sunday morning to worship our Lord, that family of faith. And, uh, but then the guilt would set in on the patient, and they would say something like, well, as soon as I'm better, I'm going to go back and, and give it a try. Uh, I'm going to find some place. And you know, the very act for, just think for a minute now, friends. Listen, I, I want both churches to always be looking at, when we're back in person, looking at what we do from the eye of the visitor, from the eye of the visitor. It is so hard for people to come up and walk into that building, not knowing what's going to happen or what to expect. You can imagine the fear and trepidation. So we will welcome anyone who comes. We will love them. We will respect them, and we will invite them in, and that's how we'll do that. But, you know, we want to make sure we're set up. Studies have shown that when people visit, they want to know where the restroom is and where uh, the nursery might be in case they have children. Now, that's a study of a few years ago, but 
Today, I think people want to be welcomed and loved, and now to know they'll be safe, right? So, but I want to just uh, lift up to you that, um, you know, it's a challenge in every denomination. It's not just in the Lutheran church. It's not just in our church. Several generations of people have grown up without the church and without attending any church, without attending any church. And so we as a church now, we can't sit there on the corner like it used to be and wait for people to come in on Sunday. We now have to go out. Our congregations, our churches now have to go out into the community, into the world, and show them Jesus, and show people Jesus. Just like when they come in for service and we worship the Lord, we sing about the Lord, we hear a proclamation about the, the Lord, we read about the Lord, then we, then we go out and share, right? We're the sent out ones, we go out and share. But now all the more, especially with the coronavirus, we have to love the Lord in all kinds of creative and different ways. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I get it. So Jesus today models for us what it's like, right? He is coming into Capernaum, and he it's the, it's the Sabbath. Think Sunday. It's the Sabbath day, says our scripture today. Think Sunday. Jesus goes into the synagogue. Think church. So it's Sunday. Jesus is going to church. There's the role model there, Jesus is the role model for us in church attendance as well. It's, it's the time and day in which we worship, so we go in, knowing, knowing that we worship all the time, every day, and this Sunday morning experience is one way we might worship the Lord. And so Jesus goes in, and they're astounded at his teaching, and so are you and I, right? When we come in in our sinful condition, we're astounded, just like the disciples there in the, in the church in that day. We're astounded at the love that pours out. We're astounded at the grace and peace that pours out. We're astounded at the hope and joy that comes from Jesus, not in the world. Not in the world, but in Jesus. In Jesus, right? Amen. So really, friends, the, the way I want us to look at it in terms of church is not to be hard on yourself about church attendance. I don't take attendance. God doesn't take attendance. And I know that you who are watching this are already I'm preaching to the choir because you love to come and many of you do. And when you don't or can't or are on vacation or unable, then find another way to get church, right? I say that and this week in my midweek message, I'm already hearing some feedback from people who appreciated it. Uh, it's about devotions. It's about having a time spent with God every day, not just Sunday morning, but every day. And for Lent, I've handed out and will continue to hand out these little devotional booklets, a story to tell. This is our Lenten devotional, piece of cake, baby. Piece of cake, baby. A little Bible verse, something to ponder, a small story, a prayer each day during the month of, or month, during the time of Lent. Starting on the 17th, we'll look at these in our Sunday night faith formation program. I'll reflect on these on Sundays, and we will get into this devotions. And that's a, a midweek message this past week. Please look it up and watch my um, couple minutes on how to build a devotional life because we're devoted to God. We are devoted to God because God is devoted to us. Amen. We are devoted to God because God is devoted to us. And there's a great song that I love that I uh, think that we should adapt as our own. And it has to do with who the church is. This song is called, We Are the Church. It says, the song lyrics, the refrain goes, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. I am the church, you are the church, and we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we are the church together. And it is a beautiful thing. And I have some, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this. I am the church, you are the church, 
We are the church together. <laughs> There's not a building, listen. There's not a steeple. Church is not a church is the people. <laughs> Behind. Together. We are the church. You get the point. Stop kids from singing. We are the church, friends. That's the gift God has given us. What does that mean? Well, Whatever you think it might be, but I think it has to do with being kind, loving one another, serving the Lord with joy and thanksgiving. You are the church. I am the church. We are the church together. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail the Lord's anointed. Great song, hymn of the church. Hail to the Lord's anointed. Now, friends, let us confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and Jesus will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, we believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, lay leaders, the church, and all of its ministries, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all God's work in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forest and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, for those who are sick and hospitalized, especially those dealing with COVID. For those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and any that are in need. For caregivers, hospice workers, 
and home health aides, let us pray. Have mercy, O God, for the concerns of these congregations, for those who travel, those absent when we gather for worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, and for other needs in our community, let us pray. We especially want to pray today for Julie Muncy, president of the Church Council at Faith Lutheran, whose mother is especially ill uh, with the coronavirus, and Julie may not, is not feeling well herself. So we just lift up Julie and her husband Chuck and their family in our prayers. Have mercy, O oh God. For the covenant God made with, made with us in the waters of baptism, in thanksgiving for the baptized who died in the Lord, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Namaste. Namaste. May the peace of Christ be with you. Namaste. The holy in me greets the holy in you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you for your offerings. They continue to be strong. We are thankful. I am and the church councils are. Uh, remember the reminder to continue to give as God has directed you, not as anything else or anybody else. Send them to the churches. They could be received there and accounted for appropriately, or you can do it online electronically, as you know. And so we want to pray in thanksgiving for the offering. Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name. Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in darkness and in light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. And blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. And blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Who in the night when she was betrayed took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this to remember me. Again after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us, awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us say together that prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you have your communion elements there ready to go. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come and be fed. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come and be fed. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life, and we are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Friends, that was so good. Let's hear it again. Christ Jesus, at this table... In our own homes, virtually, we have been feasted on your very life, the body and blood for us, strengthened for our journey to be the church out in the world. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others, and serve others in your name. Not my name, your name. Amen? Amen. Your announcements today really are thin. Uh as I mentioned about the uh, Lenten devotionals, I'll be out again this coming Saturday, as I was yesterday, uh, to make these available, 9 to 11 at Faith and 1 to 3 at St. Andrews, again this coming Saturday, February 6th, um, One, sorry, 9 to 11 Faith, 1 to 3 at St. Andrews, look for announcements on email, I'll have these Lenten devotional books to hand out, and if you need some more communion elements, I will have those as well, and I'm trying to scroll through my mind. I don't think there's anything else that you haven't already gotten electronically. As I lifted up in prayer, Faith Lutheran's Church Council uh, President Julie Muncie uh, welcomes and covets your prayers as uh, the family's under some stress with her mother hospitalized and in serious condition. Uh, her husband Chuck had COVID, is recovering, but still doesn't feel well. And Chuck lost his brother this past week, about two weeks ago now, I guess. And uh, we lift them and the Muncie family in our prayers. If you have a prayer request, if you have a prayer request, simply send that to Sheila, and Sheila will forward that out to everybody at Faith. Faith Lutheran, prayer request, lift up anything, anybody, let us know. It'll go on our prayer wall to, that gets handed out and mailed out and, and on email. I point it like it's like you can see it, like it's on there. And St. Andrews can let Joyce Yaki, Joyce Yaki, email her or MJ in the office on a prayer request you may have. And let's keep going as a community of prayer, right? That's how we're the church. In one way, we pray for each other. We pray for those who are outside of our walls, right? We're not afraid to invite someone. We're not afraid to share these videos on our Facebook pages or out on social media, to let, not because of Doug's any good, but because God is at work in our churches, in our worship, in our liturgy, and God is at work, so we don't want to get in the way of that, right? We want to stand and let it go and be positive about it. So be a gift, be God's grace unto the world. And now receive this blessing, friends. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Amen. Oh, thanks be to God. Sorry, wrong answer. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen, everybody. God bless you, and have a good day today. Blessings.
Okay, Kelly. Let's ready, set, go. Who gave his life for us and is <laughs> start over. <laughs> so I got Edit. It. Put it in your special file, Kel. Rise and shine, you people. <laughs> okay, Kelly. Deuteronomy, Psalm 111, uh, 1 Corinthians, you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day by day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reminds me of the scene from Meet the Parents. Anyway, please be seated for the readings. Hey, Kel. Um, I want to re-record the Lord's Prayer because I laughed in the middle of it. It's just like that prayer that um, is done on Meet the Parents. So can I, I don't know if I can do that this way by pausing. Let us Amen. pray. Let us pause a moment to refresh the pastor. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Pastor. That's really good.